Hello and welcome to the RadioTimes.com Doctor Who podcast. My name's Hugh Fullerton. And I am usually referred to as Morgan Jeffrey. <laughs> and this week we are tackling a contentious topic. Why the BBC was right, or possibly not right, to cancel Doctor Who. No, your ears don't deceive you. There hasn't been some big new news that uh, you didn't hear about. Somehow you missed that Doctor Who was cancelled. No, we're basically talking about how back in the 80s when the series was uh, cancelled by the BBC for, you know, for the, I was going to say for the first time, probably, hopefully for the last time, but why the series was cancelled back then. Um, and, you know, whether, you know, as, as, as I think Morgan's going to explain in a minute, why that may have been a good thing. I mean, Morgan, do you want to jump in there? I, lo I love that you're putting all of that on me. Yeah, uh, yeah, Morgan. This... Hey, talk about well... your opinions. <laughs> <laughs> well, the reason, the reason this came up is because uh, it, it's now, it, give or take a TV movie, Doctor Who has now been back on the air uh, for, for as long as it was originally off the air. So there's been, you know, give or take. So there's been as long a gap between the show going off the air uh, in 1989 and coming back in 2005 as there has been between 2005 and now. So we just thought it would be an interesting point at which to kind of reflect on the show's original cancellation and whether or not it was the right thing to do. And I, mm. I'm going to, I'm going to put out there, I'm going to say, I, I think it was in retrospect, the, the right thing to do. And that is, uh, that is in no way a slight on the Sylvester McCoy era, uh, which does uh, get a lot of stick um, from certain factions of fandom. Um, I actually, I actually quite like that era. I think the show there was starting to find its feet again after a few troubled years. But I do think if Doctor Who had continued on into the nineties, uh, it, it would have continued to be treated as it was treated at the time um, by the BBC, which was almost as the uh, the, the problem child, the, the black sheep mm. um, of the drama department, and. Uh, just yet last year, Andrew Cartmel, who was the, the script editor on Doctor Who at the time, uh, he, he came out and said that he thought the show was uh, held universally in contempt by the powers that be. Um, and he, he, he said, uh, it's extraordinary to say that now when it's sort of a jewel in the crown, the BBC, but Doctor Who was just beyond the pale. And I, I would argue, I don't know what you think, but I would say that in order to kind of regain some sense of esteem in both the eyes of the public and and almost for the thinking around Doctor Who to change, for it to become sort of archive television, vintage television, classic television, um, something that was worthy of revival and worthy of properly investing in. I think it needed that break. Mm. I, think, I think you might be right. I actually um, recently spoke to Ronan Munro, who wrote Survival, which was uh, the last quote-unquote classic Doctor Who serial. Um, mm. and she said something similar. She said that there was a real sense at the time that like, the BBC wanted to shut us down. So we kind of, there was a certain creative freedom in that, in that they kind of felt like it didn't really matter what they did because yeah. every story could be their last. Yeah. Um, I mean, in, in Survival, they ended up having to, Andrew Carmel wrote a like little voiceover for Sylvester McCoy to play over the end to make it seem more momentous than, you know, the Doctor and Ace just sort of wander off. Wander <laughs> off, yeah. At the end. Um, but yeah, no, I think it is interesting to kind of look back on that time. And she said the, the difference when she, because obviously Ronan Monroe, has written for the modern series as well. She said the difference of the vibe and the support the BBC had for it um, in you know 2017 was just you know ridiculous. Um, but yeah, no, I, I kind of know what you mean. It is crazy to me that it's been that long though that it was off air in a weird sort of way because I think it's been on for ages in the modern era. I and mean, then you think it was off air for all that time. And you you know on a on a side note, it's kind of a testament to the show that it kind of kept alive all that time. I know it had the TV movie, obviously, but, you know, things like Doctor Who magazine and, you know, fan groups and, you know, comics and books and all that. Like, it, you know, it is crazy that the show kind of kept alive. And obviously Big Finish, you know, obligatory mention. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I, I think I kind of agree with you. Like, when Doctor Who came back in 2005, it was a reboot, right? It, the show was, like, really, like, changed. They had, like, a really different way of writing it, a really different way of producing it, a really different way of acting in it, to be honest. Like, much more sort of, I don't know, grounded storytelling, almost like mm. soap-like. And I feel like it would have been harder to kind of apply that gradually to the show as it was on TV than it was for someone like Russell Davis to come in with this grand vision and kind of rebuild it from the ground up, essentially as a new show, right? I mean, that's the kind of, what, Doctor Who is always the same show and you kind of can follow it back and forth, but New Who is really different to Old Who, both mm. in terms of like how it's structured and all those other factors I mentioned. And kind of basically, it's sort of a cheat in that they brought Doctor Who back, but they also just made a new show that people really, <laughs> really liked. So, yeah. um, and that obviously wouldn't have been possible if Doctor Who was still on. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? No, I, I, I think you're right. I think if the show had been ongoing, it would have been much harder for someone to overhaul it 
even mm. even if someone had come in with a with a creative vision, a really strong creative vision, as Russell T Davies did, it would have been harder to kind of jump on a moving train, if you like, and and overhaul the show and bring it back. Um, and, and, and you have to something has to be gone for you to miss it, right? So yeah. if Doctor Who hadn't gone off the air, there wouldn't have been that sense of occasion um, behind it coming back. It would have just been part of the furniture. And uh, that's the one thing you never want Doctor Who to be. You want it to remain a special show. So again, you know, of course, you know, on balance, I always want Doctor Who to be on TV. But looking back, was it the right thing for it to go away for a while in order to then... You know, if if Doctor Who had never come back, I would be saying no. The BBC were absolutely wrong to cancel right. Doctor Who. But be, but seeing it in context, knowing that the show has come back and that it's come back, you know, in such incredible fashion, you think, okay, maybe that was the right uh, the right thing to rest it at least. Yeah, I mean, I think you've got to think as well. Just like recently, when Jodie Whittaker's first series, they announced they were changing from twelve episodes to ten and changing by five minutes. There was like uproar you know, by like a, <laughs> quite, quite a minor change. I mean, I know it's a big thing to lose a couple of episodes, but when you think about it, you know, adding a few minutes here, taking away a couple of episodes there. If you look at classic Doctor Who and try to turn that into Christopher Eccleston's first series, I can't imagine that that's not, that's going to go down well with fans. Whereas if there's been nothing, <laughs> they'll kind of go with anything. And that's not, not saying that that first series is just anything. It's really good. But, you know, I think it made it easier to accept. I think because they'd had a lot of times of, kind of creative Doctor Who storytelling like fan-made mm. films and you know spin-offs and a movie and things like that I think because there'd been already different types of Doctor Who storytelling it was easier to accept you know the big change as it was. Yeah and also that break helped in terms of introducing those format changes in the sense that uh, Doctor Who when it started off in the in the 60s this um, sort of 25 minute or 23 minute episode format that wasn't that all that unusual I think you know we talked about this last time about how or, or a couple of episodes ago about how you had um, shorter dramas uh, mm. back then. But then you get into like the late eighties and that half hour, 25 minute, half hour drama format is, is much more unusual. The only reason Doctor Who was still being made like that at that point was because that was how it had always, always been made. Right. Yeah. So, so you kind of needed a cutoff for someone to go, sorry, why were, why are we making this in 25 minute episodes? Why don't we make this as a drama would be made today? which is what Russell T Davies did in, in around 2003. Yeah, definitely. Like, I think, you know, it's possible that you could have gradually evolved Doctor Who over that time. But I'm also thinking, you know, if Doctor Who was kind of, not necessarily running out of steam in the 80s, but, you know, it was, it was having these issues and it had carried on. Like, it could have been that it could have deteriorated, you know, people might have mm. left. They could have gotten people in who didn't care about the show. And it could have been that the show really did deteriorate to a point where, it was not good. And then it maybe wouldn't be as fondly remembered. You know, maybe there's another five years of bad Doctor Who. You just think, uh, well, that, you know, I kind of wish they'd ended it earlier. You know, there's definitely yeah. think TV shows. I don't want to name any names, but there's TV shows where people think, you know, the last season was a complete letdown and it ruined mm -hmm. the whole show for me. You kind of wouldn't want Doctor Who to be that. Um, so no, it is interesting. I mean, on the flip side, who knows? Maybe it would have been amazing. Maybe there would have been a huge change and there's like, you know, a decade or so of, incredible Doctor Who stories that we never got to see in a parallel universe that like you know really really came into its own when Charles Dance was cast as the Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> well there were uh, rumours at the time that it was going to be uh, Richard Griffiths I think I don't mm. know how um, how valid that is but yeah that, there were rumours that he might be the next Doctor after Sylvester McCoy and yeah who knows 90s Who could have been great but something you've already touched upon on a little bit talking about um, Big Finish and, 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 and Doctor Who magazine and, and the fan films the sort of the, the wilderness years of Doctor Who, as they're known, the time when the show wasn't on the air, I, that, that time really bred creativity, mm. I think. There was so much... Um, so, again, as much as on balance, I always want Doctor Who on TV rather than not having it on TV. When we didn't have it on TV, there was so much exciting stuff going on in the worlds of Doctor Who beyond television. So on audio, in the, the, the book ranges that you had from uh, Virgin and then the, the BBC, they were doing really interesting and experimental things. And, of course, those things all still exist. Um, but, and again, not a slight on them, but they do have to sort of toe the party line to a certain extent. They, they, they all have to, um, act as spin-offs from the, from the main show. Whereas in the, in the nineties, those things were the sort of the main thrust, the main focus. And so they could, uh, take risks and, and, and change things up and, and do things that were really unexpected. And obviously so much of the talent that we see in the kind of modern series kind of came came up in those years. You know, Stephen Moffat mm. wrote a Doctor Who sketch before he wrote Doctor Who. Uh, Rob mm. Shearman, who wrote Dalek in the first episode, you know, was broke his teeth doing big Finnish dramas. 
um, in the 90s. And, you know, you kind of feel like if Doctor Who hadn't been on, I mean, it's maybe too much to say that those people couldn't have come through in the way they did, but maybe they wouldn't mm. have. And then maybe, you know, the show we as we have it now, some of the great episodes as we have them now. Um, Nick Briggs as well, um, who, of course, has made a significant contribution to the TV series without the cancellation. Perhaps we wouldn't have had Nick Briggs uh, voicing the Daleks because he sort of came up through through Big Finish and Big Finish in general like, um, might not have been granted the license to produce original Doctor Who on audio were the TV series still ongoing. I know that's a license that they have maintained since with Doctor Who back on, on the telly, but I, I'm, not, I'm not so sure the BBC would have granted them that license were Doctor Who on the air at the time. Uh, so on that level, we would have been denied hours upon hours of, of great Doctor Who stories. I mean, by that, with all these examples, we're proving why it was definitely the right decision unequivocally. So I'm going to pose something controversial. I mean, people have said before, you yeah. know, at different points in the modern series, the show needs to be rested. We need another mm. break. I mean, I don't think we're at that point yet. Do you think we've still we'll get... got, we've still got another, what, how, how long does it say? How long, if it's been back for 15 years, yeah, we've still got like another 11 years. Exactly. Before we, it reaches, which is the next milestone, which is new who has been on longer than classic who. Definitely. So I guess I'm kind of, I guess I'm kind of wondering Will they get to that point, do you think? I, I guess inevitably. And again, like pre uh, prefacing this by saying, I always want Doctor Who on TV. But in, I think inevitably, you know, nothing lasts forever. Everything is finite. Doctor Who will go off air again at some point. Um, and I think, you know, the likes of Stephen Moffat have said this, like, of course, it, it will eventually go off the air at some point. The hope is that when it goes off the air, that it's not a permanent cancellation, that it is another rest. Um, and I think, to be honest, I, th I feel like if Doctor Who were to go off air now, I think it would come back again in some form because the, the franchise, if you like, is, is now uh, almost like the equivalent of something like James Bond or Sherlock Holmes. Um, it, ha it has that kind of cachet to it that if Doctor Who were to be cancelled on the BBC tomorrow, movie producers, I think, in a few years would be sniffing around it or in a few years after that, you know, there'd, there'd be talk of another TV reboot or, so, or something. Um, so, so I think eventually Doctor Who will probably reach a point where, again, it is the, like like all things, it's probably best that it, it is rested, but but with the proviso that fingers crossed it does again as it did in two thousand and five, come back sort of refreshed and, and and with with someone who has a real vision for the show. All I'm hearing here is the Doctor joins the MCU in twenty twenty thirty, yeah twenty thirty. The the thing that's um, quite remarkable about Doctor Who actually. Is that, or one of the things, is that from 1963 to now, it has maintained this consistent, I can't believe I'm about to say this, this consistent canon. And of course, there are all kinds of inconsistencies. Yeah, Hugh's shooting me a look. Of course, there are all kinds of inconsistencies throughout the canon. But in terms of it being one story, um, and again, sort of James Bond was again sort of like a, a similar thing in, in, the, in the sense of it was intended to be one story from the first film up until a certain point, where with the Daniel Craig era, they then rebooted it and said well this is again this is page one again now doctor who has always been one continuous story so my only concern if it went off the air again would be if someone then wanted to revisit it after that yeah it, it feels remarkable that we've got to this stage with it being one continuous story would the next person go i want to reboot doctor who which almost happened in the 90s with the paul mcgann tv movie that was almost a, a reboot rather than a continuation more um, like uh, Doctor Who and the Daleks with uh, Peter Cushing kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. It was it was like taking the, the basic premise, the basic character, but then um, you know splitting him off into his own continuity. So I, I just hope that if Doctor Who is ever arrested and then brought back, that it somehow maintains that sense of continuity. That the next person, because once you do that, there's no going back from it. Really, I know I know we've seen examples of things like strange example, but like Ghostbusters recently, where they did. Uh, the first two movies, then a reboot, and then the next movie is actually going to be a sequel to the original two movies. So you can kind of go, let's ignore that reboot, let's go back to the original, the original continuity. But it is it is harder to do that once you've kind of cut that cord and done that reboot. So I hope if Doctor Who, <laughs> really projecting forward now, but I hope if Doctor Who is cancelled and comes back, that they m maintain that sense of it being one uh, ongoing story. And I hope that if Doctor Who is cancelled, then brought back, then cancelled again, and then brought back, I they yeah. do it then as yeah. well. I mean, I do sort yeah. of, I do sort of feel like the big difference we have these days is the BBC has said, you know, they're editorially very happy with Doctor Who, and obviously mm. Doctor Who makes money in other ways that other uh, BBC shows don't. 
Um, yeah. Whereas before, I mean, obviously there was always merch and stuff, but I feel like it's kind of a little bit more codified, a little bit more international now. I mean, I could be wrong. Yeah. Um, so we are in kind of a slightly different uh, milieu than perhaps Doctor Who was in the 1980s. But yeah, I, I mean, I do think about even the fact that they wanted Tom Baker in the TV movie, didn't they, instead of Sylvester McCoy, mm -hmm. because he was the famous Doctor. And you do think of Doctor Who and the Daleks, where they just made, you know, a TV version, kind of just adapted it a little bit. You, you were totally right, though. I hadn't really thought about this. If someone, you know, cancelled the show, immediately someone would be like, I will make it. Do you know what I mean? It's got that nostalgia yeah, factor. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. like, it's like when, you know, other studios, you know, let their uh, options lapse on superheroes. Someone's always there to snap them up. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah, no, exactly. I, I, I don't think if Doctor... And the important thing as well to think about is that Doctor Who initially was never cancelled, which again is something that Andrew Cartmel has said, that it wasn't like someone went in to, you know, he stepped into his office or John Nathan Turner's office and said, that's, that's it guys, shut it down, turn off the lights, you know, um, dismantle the TARDIS. That wasn't what happened. They just didn't get a commission for, a, for another series. Um, it, 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 Doctor Who was just sort of left to, left to rest. Um, and I... That's kind of still now how the BBC operates as well. You don't, it's not like the US networks where they have a, um, kind of a season of axing shows. The BBC rarely comes out unless pushed and says, we have canceled this programme. Shows just don't come back. So, I am, so that's what happened with classic Doctor Who. And I imagine that's what will happen if we ever get to the point where New Who, uh, in inverted commas, ends. It just won't, you know, it'll be, oh, it's on hiatus, it's rested. It won't come back for a while. And then it will eventually come back in some form or another whether that's on the bbc whether it's as a movie whether netflix pick it up you know who, who knows yeah and i feel like can you imagine the fan campaign considering how many fan campaigns there are for tv shows when they go off there to bring them back the doctor who one doesn't bear thinking about you know if the internet would go nuts i mean just the other day we had the internet trending when people were slightly mean to sasha the one you know and uh now all of a sudden doctor who's gone i i could you know it would crash twitter that's my prediction yeah, no, uh, like, it, yeah, it would be spectacular. Doctor Who fans love to complain about Doctor Who, but they only complain about Doctor Who because they love Doctor Who. And I think if you ever dared suggest it, like, there's bound to be, like, people listening to this podcast be saying, what are you talking about? Rest the show? We don't want to rest the show. I I'm really angry about a load of stuff that Chris Chibnall just did. But no, don't rest the show. I want it, I want it on. Um, yeah, we, we love the show. We love to complain about the show. But don't dare take away our show. I hate watching every minute of Doctor Who. Can't wait for the next series. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. The credo of the Doctor Who fan. But, you know, what do you think, listening at home, do you think the BBC were right to axe Doctor Who in 1986? Was it 1986? 1989. Hmm. Was well, the BBC... well they, did, they, they did axe it in 1986 and again in 1989. That's what um, I was thinking of. Yeah, they brought, they brought it. But let's just hope if Doctor Who does ever go off the air again, that the campaign to bring it back is better than Doctor in Distress uh, mm -hmm. from 1986. Um, were the BBC right to cut it then? Would they be right to cut it in the future? You know, what is that parallel world where Doctor Who went on for another, you know, decade or so? I mean, please write in and let us know. I mean, we occasionally get comments saying that the BBC should cancel Doctor Who anyway. So, you know, I, you know maybe we won't notice the difference. But... We, get, we, get some, we get some comments saying that Doctor Who is already dead. And it's been dead since 2017. So. And we also get a lot of very positive comments talking about how much they we enjoy do. the show. So, you know, just, just, for, <laughs> just for balance. Um, but, yeah, no, please do uh, let us know what you think. I mean, it's an interesting topic. And, I, you know, it's, until you suggest it, it's not really something I've thought about. Um, obviously, yeah, we, as ever, we have loads of Doctor Who content on RadioTimes.com if you want to read about that. Uh, we have stuff about recent fan campaigns and some fun features, things like that. And obviously, all the previous editions of this podcast are on our YouTube channel. Uh, some people have asked if it's on you know, iTunes, things like that. We've still not done that yet, but um, hopefully we'll at some point in the future. Uh, for now, I've been Hugh Fullerton. I've been Morgan Jeffrey. And thank you for listening. Goodbye. <laughs>